Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome to a resume review video. In this video, I review resume for people looking for internships and jobs in India and US. I picked the resume based on my post on LinkedIn. So if you're interested in a resume review, do check out my LinkedIn. I'll link it here and in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into today's resume review. All right. So my very first impression of this resume is it's a bit too cluttered. There's a lot of content going on and also the formatting is a bit off. So in here you can see there's a lot of content up front and then there's a lot of gap here. So one thing I would say, especially for first impression, try to do a little bit better formatting. This also goes for the bullet points that you've got one format here and the other here. While it's not super important, it is important that it looks clean because right now it looks a lot of data mushed in together. So I think that is something you can start off to give a good first impression for your resume. All right. So the thing that I really like about here is you're very clearly defining what is it that you're good at and the kind of jobs you are looking for. So again, I'm assuming here based on what you've written proficient in transforming conceptual design to modeling, prototype, fabrication, testing, and install slash end use. That is also the job that you're aiming for. If that's not the job you're aiming for, then it would make sense for you to change those things here and also project that, okay, these are the next things that I'm looking for. But I'm going to assume that you're going to, you're interested in the same kind of work. And so it's really good that you have it right off the bat. I also like that you've mentioned the skills and major things that are looked for from mechanical engineering, such as FEA, PDM, right off the bat. The one thing I would say, though, again, is it looks a lot cluttered. I know there's a lot of information to give. Either break it down a little bit or maybe prioritize in terms of the top skills that you can offer and the job is looking for. Which also brings me to another point. So, for example, let's say you when you're applying for jobs, this list can be all the skills you know. And then when you're applying for a specific job, look at the description and see what are some of the skills that they're looking for and mention only them or them and a little bit more of what you think would be important, but not everything. So that is also something that you can keep in mind. All right. Next, I really like that you have your experience, research projects, education, all kind of segmented out. Now, I have gone through the list and I would say that your position as a teaching assistant is not your best experience. So maybe that is not something that you should put forth first. Now, because you have worked also on research and projects, if that is something that you have done more recently, I would put my projects before professional experience in this case, simply because that holds more weightage than your teaching assistantship when it comes to the experience that you have for the job that you're applying for. Coming down to the specific points. So one of the reasons your resume is so cluttered is because you have a lot of information in there, but a lot of information is also very repetitive. So there are things that you can remove and make it more condensed. I'll give you two examples of this. The very first one is tutored students one-to-one -to, -one to ensure 100% assignment completion and understanding of the concepts like so on and so forth. Now, when you say you've tutored, the person understands that it's for assignment completion and understanding of the concepts. So you don't have to mention that again. And if you remove that, this comes down to just one line, which is what bullet points are. Very concise information that you're trying to give the other person. So... Another way to put the same sentence without even making a lot of changes would be tutored students one-on-one -on, -one on concepts of kinematics like position and analysis, cam design, etc. and so on and so forth. So you could essentially remove this, which is already included in the word tutored. So the second example of this is again here. So you have included in your project title EMG-based analysis of gait disorder using forward dynamics. Oh, sorry using forward dynamics. And you've written the same thing again in the bullet point, which is not necessary. So if you remove that sentence and simply start talking about the things you've done, then you are removing that duplicate information and making it more concise and clean. 
another thing in here is you've not included the dates or not specifically the dates but the months and years you worked on these projects there are two important reasons for including date one of them is when did you do it and second how long you worked on a particular project so if it's something that you worked on for maybe 3 months versus something you worked on for maybe just a week so having that dates or months and years gives a clearer idea on how long you worked on a project for Now another thing I want to point to is I saw a sentence here called published. Now this could either be a paper or a poster. I'm not sure exactly how you ended up publishing this. I would put that as a separate section and talk about the work that was published. It's definitely a positive that you should highlight further. I would say create a separate section and if you google there's a very specific format when it comes to talking about your work that's published. It's generally title name of the authors month and year just google it up pick a format and put it out there i think that is something that you can definitely highlight while we are here another thing that i would like to highlight that you've done a very good job at is including the things that you have used so for example you used solid works you used arduino you also went into details that you created a 6 degree of freedom bipedal robot that's amazing another thing to possibly add here is your learnings and results and also make sure you're preparing for those things because those are some of the questions that you could present that you could potentially be asked in an interview now one thing given you have worked with a uh, bipedal robots in the past if that is an area of interest for you that you'd like to further explore i would say include that information at the top as well I say this because right now when I read the first 2 3 lines on your resume my impression would be okay this is a person who's a mechanical engineer interested in creating 3D parts so if you're interested more towards the robotic side and if 6 degree of freedom bipedal robot is something that you are interested in continuing further I would include that information here as well overall you have a great resume I would say make sure you're removing those duplicates and creating a more crisper resume for yourself i do hope this is helpful to anyone watching and if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like and if you haven't already don't forget to subscribe thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video